that you smoke is now unfolding. Though your children shall be holding dreams awake and in this moment, so spirit. Prophesy like it is done. One desire. 
heart continue burning for our King is soon returning yes. as the world awaits your presence Spirit come Spirit come Spirit come Spirit come, Spirit come.
glory out of dust, children held within the arms of peace. And he has made a way for all, mercy waits where sinners fall.
Heaven, there is free. 
on every face. There is freedom. Apparently, there's a lot of sinners in this section. <laughs> this one right here is kind of... This, these, these, they, these guys over here are living right. <laughs> this section's pretty good, too. <laughs> he's in, he's in, he's in. Okay. All right, last week we prayed about money. I want to know, is anybody, did anybody get breakthrough? Yes, one, two, three, four. Maybe y'all did do right, because over here it's getting blessed over here. Hey, that's what happened. They got blessed and they're out on vacation now. I don't know. All right. How many are still waiting on their uh, God to move? Raise your hand. All right, let's pray again. Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you. Your word says, ask according to your will, Father God. And your will is that we are blessed, Father God. We just ask, Father God, for any obstacle that is holding up, Father God, uh, your uh, blessing coming to, Father God. If there's a sin in our life, if there is, a, uh, uh, if this is an attack from the enemy, Father God, we just rebuke that in Jesus' name, and, and we uh, uh, bind the the, uh, the enemy, Father God. We release, Father God, the funds from heaven. Father God, any sin in our life, we repent. Father God, we ask that you forgive us and, and help us. Your word says that you work in us the will to do and the power to do, Father God. So uh, our, our will is being converted over to you, Father God, and we are uh, allowing you to, uh, to empower us to overcome, Father God, any shortcomings in our lives. So, Father God, we come standing before you in the blood of Jesus, Father God, covered in his righteousness, not in our own, Father. We come declaring your word and coming before the throne of and we say, money come in Jesus' name, that we may uh, take care of our bills, that we may uh, buy the things that we need to buy, and Father God, and also to have some of the things that we desire, Father. And we just thank you for it and praise you for it. All God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's coming. Turn to your other neighbor and say, it's here. Oh, there's no faith in that. Come on. Say, it's coming. It's coming. Turn your other name. It's here. It's here. 
You got it? Yeah. Give it to me, Jim. Amen. Amen. That's probably where some of it's at. All right, uh, for those that wanted the scriptures I posted on Facebook, look on my feed. Uh, if you don't have my, do a prayer request and I'll get you on. You can see it. I'll post it on them. I guess I can post it on the points Facebook too. All right, last week we talked about, uh, yes. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> We're talking about money, we need to get um, we need to get tithes and offerings in. Do you ushers come forward? Oh yeah, we got the mission thing too. You got that ready? She's looking at me like she's on the right thing. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. You want you to talk about it. You don't want to? Okay, I will. Alright. Hey, wait, wait, before we do that, today is my wife's birthday. So let's see. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Happy Awesome. All right. The initial need is $473 to register with the government as a school and not a charity. This will allow the teachers to freely teach Christian material that honors the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as allow the school to make a profit that will sow back into the Shepherd's Heart Orphanage. And for those that don't know, they have 15, 16 girls that they have at the orphanage. This is the uh, building that the preschool is in. Needs a fresh coat of paint, level of sand area so kids won't trip, and repair the roof as a leak. You know about those, don't you? Playground, build a retaining wall, drainage ditch to so rain water will run off the playground, repaint equipment, install a large sandbox. See right, uh, see where the building is, the back of it right here? Uh, in front, that first picture that we showed you, that's on a downhill. It's, it's a pretty steep hill that goes down and 
the, the preschool is at the bottom of it. So when, the, when it rains, it runs all the way through that and then it goes through the backyard and washes everything out. So there was sand back there where those uh, teeter totters are down here on the bottom. Uh, but they all got washed away. So we got to redirect the water uh, to go down, just down the side there and not flood the house back there and then put us up sand so they can have something soft to play. Alright, these are the rooms. They need uh, a little bit of work. As you can see, they need our help. We're going to send Clayton over there to fix it. <laughs> yeah, he is. He did most of this. Okay, and then, let's see. Go next. That's it? Okay. So, uh, uh, if you would, if you would pray about it, helping us every month, the first Sunday of the month, we're doing missions. Uh, Sunday, bring your offering, and we ask that you make a uh, pledge to give a certain amount every month, and it'll take care of the kids, but also it's going to start helping take care of the preschool. We need $473 today between us and Gatesville. I think we should be able to do it. Amen? And then what's the next amount we need? $1,500? The uh, next amount is about $1,500 to $2,000, okay? So let's be praying about that. So let's bow our heads, and let's bring our tithes and our offerings uh, to the, give them to the, as they pass them out, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you, Father God, for all that you've given us, and we thank you for your blessing, Father. We thank you, Father God, that uh, you allow us to give. We thank you, Father God, that you bless us with jobs and, and income and uh, homes and food and cars and, and all that you do for us, Father God. And you only ask that we give back 10%, Father God. And that redeems the rest of it. And it takes care of the rest of it. It rebukes the devourer. It causes us not to have things break down. It causes us to have things last longer. It causes us to be blessed. It causes the windows of heaven to be opened up and poured up out upon us. A blessing that we can't contain, Father God. That we give unto you and give unto you. So we thank you for that opportunity and just ask for your blessing today. You know the needs, Father God, of this ministry. You know the needs of the people. You know the needs of all the mission works that we have, that you place on our hearts. So, Father, I just ask that you move on the hearts, that you bring forth the money that is needed. And all, all God's people said, amen and amen. amen. You can give online. You can text to give. Also, you can uh, ask Pastor Annette how to do that. Here's your app. Does it tell you on the app? How many has the new app? That's all? Oh, come on. Go to the app store and get your new app. What's it, what's it under, babe? Type in Elixio My Community in the App Store or, or the other one. It looks like that. <coughs> Pass that around. Don't be looking at my personal stuff. <laughs> Need that app so you can check in? No. 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 You don't check in with the app. Then you do everything else. They can register for events. You can register for events. How are we checking in now? Check them in. So we're taking care of them. God, y'all are spoiled. Y'all are spoiled. What happened? What? Why didn't you pass this around? What basket? Yeah. Okay, ushers. Got it over there, guys? Okay. See the E? You got yours? You got yours, you see? Billy, you got yours? Yeah. Okay, Anybody else wants, needs to see it? Yeah, it is. Yes, yeah, you need to see it? Okay. Yes? 
Just smile. Just smile. Just smile. Just smile. They're going. Okay. All righty. We done? Get back into faith. Uh, stop. Uh, let's stop taking the punches and start giving some punches. Amen. 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 How many good me? Yes. yes. Fight. We shall fight. Amen. All right. Come on. Come on. When, drink, when we were doing freedom, I, I thought of uh, what's that movie? Um, with Mel Gibson. Braveheart. Freedom. Uh, a little review in chapter Matthew chapter. 25 is where we're going, Matthew 25, 1. But in 24, Jesus was telling them, uh, when he comes again, be ready. That the day of Noah, as in the day of Noah, um, they would be doing normal life. Don't grow lax. And think that he's not coming. How many, how many have heard that Jesus is coming all their life? Amen. How many have kind of went, yeah, right. We got a couple people that are honest. The rest of you are liars. <laughs> Come on. You're like, when is he coming? Come on, let's be real. It's like you keep hearing it, you keep hearing it. Is it ever going to happen? And I, the problem is, is we get lured into, okay, it's not going to happen in my time. Well, okay, he's coming, but it's not going to happen in my time. But the problem is, is then we start doing things the world's way. And this is what Jesus is talking about. And I know, I know a lot of us look at that and we just look at the spiritual do's and don'ts and, and about being right and wrong or, or not sinning. But Jesus here is talking about how to do life. And he's saying, because he's saying in the days of Noah, they were marrying, they were doing all the normal things. And in that, then uh, they, they got lax and uh, destruction came. Right? But see, in the beginning, Jesus, came, uh, uh, the Lord God put us in the earth, and he said, what did he say? He said, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion. Amen. Right. right? So he said, I want you to multiply me in the earth. Yeah. I made you in my image, and I want you to multiply me. And in that, uh, I am prosperous. Yeah. I am creative. Yes, yeah. I'm abundant. Yeah. I'm fruitful. Not only is that, not only those, but the normal things. I am good. I'm kind. I'm loving. I don't sin. Right? But we, as a people, we focus on the don't sin. That's only a portion of it. And really, don't sin is missing the mark. And so missing the mark is doing it Satan's way versus doing it God's way. But they're still doing it to achieve the objective. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? But it, it's like this. All right, when a married couple, they come together, they have relations. That's God's way. Outside of that is Satan's way. Yes. Right? right? right. To uh, ha have workers and, and pay them and pay them on honest wage is God's way. Amen. To have workers and cheat them out of their money is Satan's way. Amen. Right? Amen. So in that, all that we do, we can either do it God's way or we can do it Satan's way. And what Jesus came to do is he came to restore that. Yeah. Right? And so in that, let's don't focus, let's, 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 allow, let's don't focus on just being good or not sinning. How many, how many have to sin in their life that they are so tired of and they focus on it all the time? It, it, it runs through their mind all the time. I know everybody didn't want to raise their hand because nobody wanted to look at it, but I saw your look. She looked at me like... Right? So Jesus is saying, don't get lax. 
He said, when you prosper, take care of the people. Don't eat and drink with those who drink to intoxication out of control. But so we take it just like uh, Eve, and we say, okay, you can't drink. We add to what God said. He didn't say don't drink. I'm not trying to be an advocate for drinking. Because most of us can't control it. Because we either we start drinking and we drink too much. And then we start looking at our neighbor's wife. Because we allow intoxication to come and then it diverts us. Right? But my point to this is that we add to what God said to control ourselves. But if we had focus on God and focus on His goodness and His and, and, and how He does life, the others would fall into place. Yeah. Amen. So He's coming. He's saying, He's saying, look, don't don't get lax and 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 do life the way I told you how to do it. So in chapter twenty-five, He begins to teach them how to operate in the kingdom, how the kingdom operates. Amen. See, Jesus came. To save that which was lost. Matthew 18, 11. What did we lose? So most of us think heaven. When we read that scripture, we think that we lost heaven. We lost more than heaven. We lost our authority. That was the main thing that we lost. We lost relationship with God. It disconnected us. But that, it wasn't just that. It was everything that went along with that. And that was our authority to have dominion, be fruitful, and multiply. Oh, yes. Amen. So Jesus came to restore that. Yeah. Not just to restore you to be a good boy or a good girl. Right. Amen? Amen? How many is living life trying to be a good boy or a good girl? Right. How many is focusing on being, building the kingdom? He said I, that he's faithful to forgive. Yeah. Now, look, I don't want us to have a, a nonchalant attitude about sin. That's not my point. But I think we have a, 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 a misguided, uh, in, uh, unhealthy fi fixation on being good or bad. Yeah. We have the knowledge of good and evil. That means we have an intimate knowledge of good and evil. Amen. Won't we have an intimate knowledge of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Have an intimate knowledge of Jesus that we can then produce for the kingdom. I want to, I want to, look, I'm, uh, if you want to, just, if you don't want to, it's okay, but uh, be honest. How many live paycheck to paycheck? Most in here. We are the head and not the tail. We're supposed to be the lender, not the borrower. So we're living way below our means. And that, that's because we're focusing all on the wrong thing. Do you know that when he, when he talks about salvation, he says, I wish that your soul shall prosper. You prosper as your soul prospers. Do you realize that that means that in anything that you put your hand to, that you're successful? Amen. So as you put your hand to your marriage, you're successful. As you put your hand to raising chil uh, children, it's successful. As you put your hand to a business, it's successful. As you put your hand to a ministry, it's successful. As you put yourself to a job, it's successful. Amen. 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 And so God says, look, I've come to prosper you. He came to Adam and Eve and he says, I, come, I want you to have dominion. I want you to have to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to uh, spread this garden throughout the earth. Yeah. And you're made in my image and I want you to multiply me. Amen. 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 So I want you to produce more of me, but I also want you to have dominion and be fruitful and multiply. In other words, I want you to build your garden up and I want you to cause it to reproduce because as we bring people 
right? Because outside of the kingdom, they should be uh, they should be lacking. So either they have a job and it's going to the wrong place, and we need to redeem that to go into the right place. In other words, they're building Satan's kingdom, and as we get them saved, they then start building God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Start redeeming, taking back what is God's. Because that's what Jesus came to do. He said, I came to save that which was lost. Okay, and then Paul said, I came to, uh, that, that, to, to finish up what God, what, what the suffering that, that Jesus uh, had left, but that's also to finish up the redeeming and the restoring into the right place. Amen? Amen. Okay, so he came to save that which was lost. John 10.10 10 says he came, and John 6.33 uh, 6, says he came to give life. And John 10.10 10 says he came to give life more abundant. How many is ready for more abundant? Amen. Amen. How many is ready for more abundant? Overflowing, shaken together, pressed down, yes. overflowing that you can't contain. Amen. Yes. See, John 6.38 says he came to do the will of God. John 6.40. have everlasting life and be raised on the last day. So he came to save that which was lost. He came to give us life and he came to give us a, more, a life more abundantly. And then when it's all over that we have eternal life. And on the last day we're ris risen again with him. So he came to restore everything. Amen? So that's a rehearsal of last week and and and, and, and uh, and, and I want to show you, in Genesis, you don't have to go there, but in Genesis 1 through 3, it talks about uh, what God told him to do. He had said, I want you to have dominion. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. And so in all of those things, those are what he came to save. And see, we died. He said, surely you shall die. And in that death, they then lived another 900 years. So that means everything that they did was for nothing. But then when Jesus came and saved us and restored us, he gave us life. So everything that we do then is eternal. So everything that we do according to his word lasts forever. Amen? Amen? And so that means that anything that we do before Christ is going to not last, but anything that we do after is going to last. It's going to, and that's why he's to store up a treasure in heaven. So as we do the works for God and we're, and we're doing pleasing to him and we do it according to his word, then everything of that goes up into heaven as a storehouse. Amen? All right. So uh, uh, Romans 14, 17 says, The kingdom, the king's domain... And in Revelation 1, 5 and 6, it says we are kings and priests. So the kingdom is not only Jesus' kingdom, but our kingdom. Right? So the kingdom is not meat or drink, meaning it's not by what you eat or drink. Or by what you don't eat or drink. The kingdom is righteousness. Righteousness is... Is right standing with God. Abraham had faith that made him right standing. So righteousness is faith. Faith puts us in right standing with God. When we're in right standing with God, we can ask what we will and it shall be done for us. So the kingdom of God is right standing with God so we can ask and do and be according to what God wants. And then it's peace. Peace is it is prosperity. It is uh, 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 intense happiness, security, safety, felicity, which is extreme happiness. It is the, the prosperity. It is the state of being at peace in your heart, knowing no matter what situation I've got, I've got God on my side. So even if I'm poor, I'm actually rich. It just is going to manifest in a minute. Amen? And so... Faith puts us in right standing we can ask. Peace puts us in the place that we're in prosperity. In other words, we always have what we need. And then joy. Joy is chara. It's delight, being well. It means to thrive. 
So the kingdom of God is right standing, asking what we will, being prosperous in it, and being able to thrive. How many look at other Christians and say they are not thriving? It's like they're selling something that they don't even believe in. Or it's not working for them. I've been guilty of that the last year. Trying to push something that, that it's not working for me because I've been on the defense. Just, you ever seen a fighter get up against the ropes and just hold like that and the guy's just beating the snot out of him? Ever seen that? You're like, move, do something. That's the way I felt the other day. It kind of hit me. That's all you've been doing, Ricky, is covering up. It's time to start swinging, throwing haymakers. <laughs> just come out. Just start swinging. You ever seen girls fight? That's funny, man. They just go. <laughs> girls come out swinging haymakers and guys just dance around before they're going to hit. That's why when you're fighting, the first thing to do is just punch them. <clears throat> but it's time to start swinging. It's time to get up off the ropes and start moving towards. Amen? It's start time to start taking territory. And, and I'll be honest with you, I started preaching this last week and it got worse this week. Amen? Every, it got worse. But that's just evidence. It's just evidence. Amen? It's just evidence. Amen. You're going to start seeing me. What, what is, what is, uh, what is uh, uh, Nancy's pro- power post like this? It's going to be like this and then like this. We're going to do emojis. We're going to get emojis made like that. 48, and we'll call this the, the haymaker. <laughs> power pose and the haymaker. Emojis. Who can make the, Who's computer literate? Let's get that done. <laughs> All right. So righteousness, I mean, uh, king, the, kingdom of jo- uh, 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 the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says it's not word, but it's power. Let's read 1 Corinthians 4.20 for me, baby. Where y'all going? This is the best part. I'm hot. It's not hot. 420. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That word, word is logos, and it is uh, 3056 in the uh, Greek, and it's something said, including the thought. Reasoning, motive, compilation. It is logic. So the kingdom of God is not logic or reasoning. It's not a bunch of words. In other words, it's not you go find a bunch of words in the, in the scripture and you start just saying them. You go find a bunch of words and you keep saying them until it's down in here, until you have power to say them. Until you become intimate with them. That you know the word. As, as wife and husband come together, they practice making a baby until they come intimate and then they produce. We have to come intimate with God until we produce. So we've got to be intimate. We've got to know him. Him and us and us and him. And then as we're intimate and we're loving him and we're showing our love towards him, and then all of a sudden he makes that word come alive. And when it becomes alive in us, then we can speak because then it's going to be in power. That word power is exousius, exousius and, it, 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 and it means miraculous power. Dunamis, I'm sorry. Dunamis. It's force, specifically miraculous power. When Jesus, when God spoke light, there was light. When he spoke and said, let there be water, there was water. There was dunamis in his word. 
Amen? So you can't just say it. That's why we say in Jesus' name or we say some things and nothing works because it's just in words. It's not in the power. We haven't been intimate. But keep saying it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep getting it in there. And eventually it's going to get in there and you, you, it's going to become part of you. And then there's going to be a difference when, you're going to, when you say it. You're going to feel it. You're going to know it. There's going to be something different about this time. And when you say it, it's going to happen. Amen? Amen? Come on. You got to get this. Come on. I'm preaching good to you. Okay. So now that was the recap. Let's move on to the next. Both... Oh, went too far. So, uh, whoa, I went way too far. So it's the dunamis power. So he's not in word, but in dunamis, in power, in miraculous power. So let's go to 25.1, please. Matthew 25.1. I'm going to show you what I just said. <laughs> then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened. Okay, now he's saying, okay, look, he said, look. In 24, he said, this is what's going to happen. Don't get laxed because the kingdom is coming and being established. And this is, then he's going to say, okay, this is how it operates. So uh, it's going to, uh, this is how you do it, in other words. Watch this. He said, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But those... But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for your, our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be enough for us and you, but, not, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they were went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Okay, I don't want to take away from the main meaning of what this scripture is talking about. It's talking about us being ready. Okay? All right, uh, and, and there's several things that we could talk about, but I don't want to talk about that today. I want to talk about operating in the kingdom. I want to show you something that the Lord showed me in this, okay? All right, see, I want you to notice that they all, ten, there was five for wise and five for foolish. Five represents grace. So both were empowered, both groups were empowered. Grace is the empowerment to do, right? So they both were empowered. They all had, both groups had lamps. So in a lamp, there's not only the wick, but there's a little oil on it to get started, right? So both groups had some oil. In other words, one group had oil, one group had just a little bit in the lamp only. One group was saved. One, was, one group was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. All right. So, the wise, thoughtful, intelligent, prudent, mindful of one's interests. Mindful of one's interests. Now, every one of us, because of the scripture, we think about salvation. We think about going to heaven. We think about being right with God. But what if we're mindful of interest? See, God's not just concerned about getting you to heaven. Because, listen, guys, we're going to go up. We're going to be caught in the air. Then we're going to have a feast. And then we're coming right back down. So the, heaven is not his concern. What did he say? I want heaven on earth. That's his concern. His, his kingdom come. His will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Amen? So that's what he's establishing here on earth. Okay, and so his interest, so your household is his interest. Your business is his interest. Your job is his interest. 
So he's wanting you to be mindful of your interests, right? So wives are mindful of, the, of, of, of our interests. And then it says, go back to verse 1. See if we can, okay, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Next word, next one. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Next one. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. That word took is lamb, lambano and is to take, to get hold of, to grab, to seize. So they took their lamps they took hold of their torch. That word lamp is lampus, and it is a flambeau, which is a flaming torch made with a, a wick, uh, a thick wick, and it's dipped in wax. It's like a candle. What does he talk about? That, it's, that we don't hide our candle, our light? The candle is the lit part of your... What did he say in, in Revelation? I'll take out your candlestick, right? Do you know that that's also talking about an angel, the pastor? As you break that word down? Okay, so they took hold, they took their lamps, they took the torch, they received the light, all, all ten of them, but the, but, it, it, but the next people... That is like they took their but took no oil. Oil is olive oil. It represents the anointing. Olive oil, when you read, is 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 the anointing, is the empowerment. He says Christ Jesus. Why does it say Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ? The word anointed. That word Christ is the anointing. That's the empowerment. Jesus anointed. See, Jesus would just be a, a man. Uh, born of God unless he had the Holy Spirit, which is the anointing or the empowerment to do what he did, to rise up and come and, 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 and live after he was killed, to do the miracles. That is by the power of the Holy Ghost. So that's how he operated. He operated in the power. So he, they were foolish that took the lamps, but took no oil, took no empowerment. Amen? Next verse. But they that was wise took oil in their vessels, not in their lamp, in their vessels. And that word vessel is angion, and it means a pale, bent, or receptacle. Now notice that it's bent and it's a receptacle. Bent and receiving. It's not in pride. It's not in who I am. It's I'm bent and receiving from the Lord, the empowerment. The, see, because that's because we're talking about having power to overcome and have dominion, and we're talking about being a, a wise and doing our life God's way. And in that, we've got to understand it's not us. It's not our giftings. It's not how uh, uh, good we are. It's not even how smart we are. It's not any, it's not any of that. It's Him. <coughs> And so they that, they that were intelligent and, and concerned of their interests bent themselves and received the anointing. Next verse. While, they were, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. When it takes God a little bit to come and answer your prayer, he's tarrying, right? And don't, how many are like me and get really frustrated with him in those moments? It's like, you see I am struggling. You see all that I, I am broken. I'm crying. I'm hurt. I'm wounded. I can't take any more. And you feel like he's just watching you, not doing anything. And you get so angry. And you pout. And you throw a tantrum. Can I get a witness? 
I can throw me a tantrum tantrum. Just make it go away, God. Just fix it. But every time he just fixed it, I did it again. And the hardest thing to do and admit is that he's taking you to teach you not to ever get in this position again. Annette and I made a vow this week. We will never be this place again. Because no matter how much the attack was, there was mistakes that we made. Because Oh, I, but th- that's pride too. Because you know what? Sometimes Jesus is going to lead you to the wilderness. And you didn't do anything. But our vow shouldn't be that we're not going to be here again. Our vow should be we're going to know we're going here. There's a difference being prepared going into the wilderness and winding up in the wilderness and not knowing how you got there. And so in that, we made mistakes to get there. We probably would have still went there, but we would have been better prepared. And I guarantee you, when you're better prepared coming in, you're a lot better prepared going out. And also, you're not in there as long. Because it takes a little while in the wilderness trying to figure out, why was I so dumb? Can I get witness? Okay, so while the bridegroom tarried and we're frustrated and we're throwing a tantrum, we just sleep, we slumbered. You know, are you going through difficult times? How many just want to go to bed, just lay in bed and hope that it'll, it'll change? I don't want to get up. I want to just stay in bed and hope it passes over. Can I get a witness? Amen. Next verse. And at midnight, there was a cry made, and behold, the bride comes, go ye out to meet him. That word midnight is not midnight. It's in the middle of the night. And it's really not night. It's in the middle of the darkness. So in the middle of the darkness that you're going through, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hold on, guys. Hold on. He's coming. He's coming in the middle of the darkness. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Amen? Amen? And so then the cry goes out, okay, he's here, he's coming. Next verse. And then all those virgins arose, and they trimmed their lamps. You know what that trimmed means? It is cosmeo, and it is to put in proper order, to do, uh, to decorate, to make ready. And it's from the word cosmos, which is orderly arrangement, which we get world, and it's to tend to, the, what comes from, and that comes from camizo, which is to tend to take care of. So they begin to take care of, do their business, all of them. They all begin to try to put in order what they needed to do. But listen, this is what happens. Five of them didn't have the bent and received the empowerment. So their oil that was in their, their, just in their lamp went out. So they were unable to finish the task. It wasn't everlasting. It wasn't eternal. And so then they had to go get more. But those that were prepared, who had bent and received and got empowered, were able to continue and do the task. And so we're not just talking about doing good deeds. We're talking about doing the business. We're talking about doing the ministry. We're talking about doing the marriage. We're talking about raising the kids. We're talking about going to school and getting good grades. We're talking about getting into college. We're talking about every aspect of our life because we are intimate with the Holy Ghost and he tells us what to do. See, the Holy Ghost will tell you it's going to be 10 years before you get here. This is what I want you to do in 10 years. But we have to have an intimate relationship with him. And he has to take us to a place where we can hear it's going to take 10 years. All right, we got to hear, I'm going to put you in prison and you're going to get beat. Oh, you thought I was going to tell you all about the good stuff. Yeah, there's good stuff too. He's going to tell you, look, there's a million dollars coming. 
But he's not going to tell you that if, you are, if you've not been and received the empowerment. Because if you hadn't received the empowerment, you're not going to be trustworthy with a million dollars. Because only in the empowerment of the Holy Ghost can we do it according to the way God wants it done. Because as we, when we see the, receive the Holy Ghost, then we are empowered to do it God's way. So then we take dominion and we do it according to His. So we do it in love. We don't do it in control. We don't do it in, uh, in, in drunkenness and in intoxication. Do you know you can get intoxicated in, with food? You can get intoxicated with doing a thrill. The only intoxication that he says we should have is that being filled of the Holy Spirit. Because when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, then we are able to do abundantly above what we think. We can go longer, we can go deeper, we can go higher. We can accomplish more. Amen? So I don't want you to think about Just being right. Both given the grace. Both given a lamp, a candle to be lit. One group bent to receive a receptacle, to receive anointing, to have power, to stay lit, to shine, to have knowledge, to walk by the Spirit. So when they operated, trimmed in the earthly event, they could put in order, they could tend and take care of whatever God had given them. And when the word came, in the middle of the darkness, they encountered it. They had an encounter with the word. In other words, they connected with the word and they accomplished what God wanted. How many come? All right, it's like this. The, the earth was void in darkness and the spirit was hovering over and when the word came, it connected with the word, and the earth had light. Then the word came, and it had firmament. Then the word came, and then it had trees and grass and, and fruit. Then the word came, and then it had animals. And then the word came, and it had fish. And then the word came, and then it had man. But all of that was the spirit hovering over. So when the word comes to your situation, do you have the power of the Holy Ghost to connect with it, to get you out of your situation, to get you to success in whatever God's called you to do? See, if you're not, you're looking, trying to go buy oil, and the word came. There's no encounter. No. We have the opportunity to get a hold of and filled with the Holy Spirit at any time. And we have the opportunity to be continuously filled. I think there's a lot of us that have gotten filled and then dried up. Because we got tired of waiting. And we left our vessels somewhere else. Or we stood up and stopped being bent down receiving. We stood up in ourselves and say, okay, it's taking too long. Let me do it myself. Can I get a witness? Because God, God, God's irritating. Right? He, do, he doesn't do anything right. According to my way and according to your way. Right? We get irritated because he takes so long. He's got nothing else to do, guys. He's outside of time, so nothing's pressing him. But the problem is, is he's trying to get you outside of time, so nothing's pressing you. Amen? Amen. If we get to the point where whatever you say, your will be done, that's where he wants us. And that's in death. And I've taken 
this way too long to die? How many here have waited too long to die? Let's bow our heads. Those that are getting baptized, if you could go ahead and go get ready. Those that are preparing the, the water, the thing, please go ahead and do it. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you for the opportunity, Father, to, to hear your word. We thank you, Father God, for the we thank you, Father God, for the word itself. Father, my heart's cry is that we would our faith would be built. That Father, that you would fill us to overflowing. That Father, we would begin to operate in faith like never before. Father, the church, the ministry has been in a battle for a long time and we're wounded and we're on our knees. We need your inner your we need you to take over. We ask for forgiveness where we have messed up and we need your help. And Father God, we've got a lot of folks that have taken our lead and gone up against the ropes and are just taking punch after punch. But Father God, we ask for forgiveness and I, Father, want your help to preach to them faith that we are victorious in you, that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus and that we can get up off those ropes and we can begin to take ground and we can throw some punches, Father God, and, and defeat the enemy, Father God, according to your word and according to your way. So, Father God, just infuse in us faith, infuse in us power, infuse in us strength, infuse in us courage, Father God, and infuse into us, Father God, the ability to walk according to your word. And, Father, let us encounter, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, receiving of the power of the Holy Spirit, and when the word comes, encountering it and causing action and correction and taking over that facility, Father God, for your glory, Father. And Father, we just ask for you to fill us up to overflowing. Cause us to be victorious again. Cause us to walk in your way. Cause us to walk humbly before you. And Father God, prepare that table in the sight of our enemies. Father God, prepare it, Father God, a glorious table that we may come and eat and drink, Father God, and not be intoxicated with the enemy, but to be intoxicated with the Spirit of God and eat, Father God, of your table. And we say, yes, Lord, yes, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill us to overflowing. Come on, everybody, stand up. Come on, Lord, fill us to overflowing. Fill us to overflowing, Lord. Fill us to overflowing. Everybody, hands raised. Come on, I want you to just cry out to Jesus yourself. Just talk to him. Tell him, tell him to come. Fill us to overflowing. Father, we have cried out some prayers today, Father God, for finances. Father, we ask for miracles to come. Father God, in spite of ourselves, Father God, we ask for you to move on the people's behalf, Father God. We ask, Father God, for that money to come in Jesus' name. We ask, Father God, for that miracle to come in Jesus' name. We ask for breakthrough, breakthrough Father God, in lives, Father God. We ask for uh, relationships to be restored, Father God. We ask for uh, jobs to be uh, obtained, Father God. We ask, Father God, for raises to come. We ask for money to come from the north, the south, the east, the west. We ask for buildings to sell. We ask for homes to sell. We ask for cars to sell. We ask, Father God, for cars to be bought, Father God, and houses to be bought, and, and boats to be bought, Father God. We ask for the lake houses and the, and the beach house and the, and, the, and the mountain, Father God, the cabin in the mountain, Father God. We ask for the blessing to overflow, not just to get by, Father God, but we may be fruitful and multiply, Father God. We say yes and amen to your blessing. We say yes and amen to your blessing, Father God. Bring it on us, Father. Bring it on us. Pour it on us, Father God. Pour it on your children. We have asked for forgiveness. We Ask, Father God, for your hand uh, uh, to touch us, Father God, and cleanse us. Take the coal and cleanse our lips, Father God. Take from the labor and wash our hands, Father God, and wash our feet and cleanse us. The blood of Christ has cleansed us and made us whole. We just need to wash our hands and our feet, Father God. You are worthy of all praise and honor and glory, and we thank you, Father God. Fill us to overflowing. And all God's people said, amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Awesome, 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 awesome. I got, I got my, I got this one. I'm going to take this one off. Oh, 
Ooh, thank you. I didn't know it was tucked to that one. Thank you. Uh, Evan Almighty. Bruce Almighty, yeah. <laughs> Y'all get that picture? Huh? I'm a retard, I know. Whew, they made it cold. It was hot. It was hot. It was warm. Okay, guys, come on. Let's do this quick because you're going to be cold. Oh. What's your name again? It's not cold? Okay, good. Get a little strap right there. Yeah, I want to set a little strap. <laughs> You put your bottom right on that edge there. There you go. Patsy right. Patsy right. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you as your child comes before you, identifying with you, your son in, in the baptism, death, burial, and resurrection, Father God. We thank you that she's identifying with Christ, Father. She's stating to the world that I am his and he is mine. The Lord shows me that you're a matriarch in your family, that through you many will be led to Christ. The giftings, of the, uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit will be evident in your life. It will begin to manifest. You're going to change quickly. People are going to see you and not recognize you uh, because of the change in your character and the change in your, in your ways. I'm not saying that you're bad. I'm just saying they're gonna, it's going to be evident that God is in you. There's going to be a glory upon you, a glow, and people are going to want to partake of what you have. And then the giftings, uh, uh, the giftings are going to begin, begin to manifest. You're going to begin to prophesy. You're going to be, begin to speak with other tongues. You're going to understand uh, and have discernment. Of, and you're going to speak, Father, uh, and, and Father says, into, into to people's lives. You're going to speak, Father, is, into what, what is going on in their life. The Father is going to show you. And you're going to speak and set them free. And Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got anything, Mama? Amen. Amen. Are you ready? I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Darius. Come on up here, buddy. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this child. Father, we thank you that at a young age we can know you. The Lord's going to open his ears. He's going to be able to hear what he tells you in nighttime. Listen to him because he's hearing the voice of the Lord. He's going to come. He's going to say things to you, and you're going to tell him and say that that's the Lord and let, begin to help him identify all that's being said and, and help him un interpret what's being said to him. All your boys make you proud. There's a connection between them. There's a, there's a union, a unity that's between them. And Satan's going to try to, to break it, and he's going to be the catalyst to keep it in unity. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all honor and all glory. Father, we thank you. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
Princess Ari. Come to spank her. How old is she? Four. Four. You know, I was baptized at five. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we declare over her that, that a, as she has made a declaration to be uh, identified with Christ, Father God, that she's marked now from a young age, that, Father God, she will hear your voice. She will have a relationship with you all of the days of her life. She will be trained up in the ways that she goes. She will be a marksman. She will be a... Uh, um, uh, uh, a, a, a uh, special forces in the kingdom, Father God. She will be uh, uh, enabled, empowered to go into the enemy's camp, Father God, and retrieve that which was stolen, that which was taken, Father God. Not only in lives, not only in souls, Father God, but also the enemy has taken uh, provision and, and blessings, and she'll go into the enemy's camp and take it, Father God. We just speak life over her. We thank you, Father God, that she's a prophetess in the Lord and that she shall declare the word of the Lord. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You're precious. She gave me five. You're just at the beginning, son. We will stand before thousands and declare the glory of the Lord. The Lord is about to take you to a place, a hidden place. He wants to take you away into a secret garden, and there he's going to teach you. Like David, you're going to be set aside in the field, and you're going to begin to hear his voice. You're going to learn how to battle. You're going to learn how to hear. You're going to, he's going to whisper. You're going to be able to move upon a whisper. You're going to know the motives. You're going to know the, uh, the, the, the slightest movement of the Lord, and you're going to be responsive to it. The Lord is anointing you and preparing you for his work. The Lord says, do not, be, do not despise small beginnings. Do not uh, uh, be faithful with another man and, and be faithful with little because as you are faithful with little, he's going to give you much. He's going to put a lot in your hands, but he's going to take you through a time that you're set aside and set alone with him. And he's going to begin to declare and speak into your heart. We thank you, Father. We praise you in Jesus' name. You ready? Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Christina, Christina, just uh, is a witness to me too, but that your family, Michelle, all of them have been called by the Lord. Your family's been set apart and marked to be those on the front line in this, in this, in this time, in these last days, that God is equipping you all in, in, as warrior lovers of Jesus to take the land and to, and to be in the forefront of a war that's going to bring great victory for everybody else in the kingdom of God. But there is, uh, but there is a, there is a weightiness on being on the front line and to being a uh, and to being a forerunner, and so keep yourself separate and keep yourself in a place of holiness with Him. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ray, Ray. Ray, Ray. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Man has declared a bunch of garbage over you. And today, the Lord declares over you and puts on a new mantle. And he sheds that old coat and that old cloak. And today, you are a new man. You're set apart and set upon a, a hill to hear the Lord's voice. And he is creating a new, new man in you. And he said that what, all the, uh, what the old folks have said and declared of you is no more. And he's going to re erase that from your memory. And the Lord said he's going to heal those wounds from the very core. He's going to and replace it with his love. The Lord has set you apart and you are called. But there's some things that he's got to work out of you. Through these, these hurts and these wounds, there's things that have come into your life. And the Lord's going to take them out. And the Lord, the Lord says, be patient. I'm working in you the will to do and the power to do. And don't get down on yourself and don't get discouraged. The Lord says, I'm doing it. And when you are ready, I'm going to set you before uh, men uh, to speak my word and declare my word. And he said, your quiver will be full. You're going to have many spiritual sons and daughters. You may have a lot of natural sons and daughters too, but there's going to be a lot of spiritual sons and daughters that the Lord's going to bring to you because you're going to be a changed man and you're going to know and hear his voice and you're going to be a father to many. And, 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 and people don't see it. People don't see you being able to be a father to people. But the Lord is declaring to you today that he is preparing you to be a father to the multitudes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anything, Mama? Okay. Thank you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Is that it? All right. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's bow our heads, please. Oh, that was good. Mm, that does my heart good. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. What the enemy means for destruction, what the enemy means for evil, God will turn for our good. And all that we have gone through and all that we have endured, there is a, a reaping, a reward coming, and we shall be blessed abundantly, overflowed. Many are coming to be saved, to be filled, to be baptized, to be uh, 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 equipped and to be sent out into the kingdom, to take uh, out into the world, to take for the kingdom. We thank you for it. And we praise you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. shake hands, hug next. We'll see you Wednesday. Bring a friend, bring an enemy, bring somebody.